a jack-in-the-box. Today we're making a cute and terrifying jack-in-the-box cake. I'd like to introduce you guys to Thomas. That tongue is everything. Hi everyone, my name is Abby Huntsman. Let's get started. Now before we get into this video, I want to make sure that you know that there are links in the description box so that you can donate to help fight the wildfires in Australia. Every little bit helps, so make sure you donate. Now this video is going to be a little bit different. I'm kind of bored of looking over the footage and talking to the screen, so <laughs> I'm going to try to make this more of a vlog, but also give you the same kind of content so that if you wanted to try and recreate this cake, you could still do it. So for the bottom of my cake, I'm using three six inch square cakes. And then for the top to create the Jack in the Box head, I'm using a half dome cake that's six inch on the bottom and another half dome cake that's six inch on the top. Now just like the present cake that I did, I'm going to use the top layer of cake to create and dictate the trapezoid that I'm creating to create the box that the Jack in the Box comes out of. Can you tell I'm losing my voice? I, I can't speak, but also I don't feel sick, which probably means that tomorrow I'm gonna wake up with a full blown cold. Then I gave my entire cake a crumb coat and then placed it into the fridge. I just finished the crumb coat and I put it in the fridge and I had to wet it with a little bit of magic sauce in a spray bottle so that the crust on the icing could soften up a little bit because it did create a little bit of a crust. Um, I'm going to start on my fondant work now. Oh, that did not go the way that I thought it would. <laughs> in other news, me rebuilding my castles turning out Okay, it's going a little slower than I thought because I don't want to do it, but what are you going to do? Alright, so I got some smoothening out going on here. It was really hard because the edges of this aren't straight. It's a trapezoid and I really am having trouble kind of just moving everything together to create a nice clean edge. That's fine. I'm not gonna worry about it. It's gonna look bomb anyways. All right, so here we are so far. The bottom part of this cake looks like a mess. I know, I should have covered this cake before I added this cake on top that way I can cover it with like a single piece of fondant but I didn't do that so now we got this ugly thin right there but that's okay because from all the with all the detail that I'm going to give this cake it should be fine right hopefully I think so I wouldn't put out something that I wasn't proud of now for the top of this cake the only thing I really needed to do was make sure that one side of this was flat. There's a little bit of bumps, you can see, but for the most part, this is gonna be the kawaii cute side. So I wanted to make sure that it was nice from bottom to top. And I can start adding all of my details. I didn't really know how I wanted to cover the side of this, but I thought that diamonds looked really nice, especially because the Jack in the Box, I'm giving it like a jester look. You know like the hat that the jesters wear? I wanted to sort of replicate that with the shapes that I place on the box, and diamonds work perfectly for that. Look. 
at this I didn't think I was gonna like it so much but I do it looks stellar now for the scary side I added these holes using this tool I'm just gonna add some like pearl sprinkles there for a little bit more detail the kawaii side is pretty simple but the simple diamonds look nice here too so I'm happy let's get to the head So I got the base of the koi side done, I'm still in love with the diamonds and I'm eating some oatmeal. And now I'm going to get to the scary part. I really am not sure how I want to do this yet. I think because we've got really big black eyes here, I'm going to try to make it so that his eyes have dark circles and I've been inspired by Palpatine from Rise of Skywalker so maybe a hint of villainy of Palpatine. <laughs> I think that'd be really cool. Let's get to it. Now when I was thinking of how I wanted to incorporate the monster side to the Jack in the Box, I thought that it would be cool if this was a Jack in the Box toy and the monster just latched onto the back of the head. And so that's why you can kind of see it stretching over the back of the Jack in the Box head. Why did the monster decide to latch onto the Jack in the Box? That's for you to decide. But I think it has something to do with tricking children, obviously. Because it's a Jack in the Box toy. Alright, so we got the scary side and the cute side going. Look at that. I tried to give it the same sort of wrinkles that Palpatine has, but it's kind of unrecognizable just because the nose makes it look like a really sad elderly clown kind of. Huh. <laughs> it might do a little bit more work on the mouth just because I don't think it looks like it's smiling enough and I want it to look like it's really happy. You can see that the smile goes all the way up past the eyes. But for the most part, I like the way the eyes look. I love, I don't know if you can see this, let's see. There's the texture on the nose. I think that looks really nice. Um, and I love all the wrinkles. I always love all the wrinkles on the scary side. And I'm almost finished with my oatmeal, just so you guys know. <laughs> okay, let's get to more work. Now because this head is double sided, I couldn't make it so that the top of the box opened up like this. Uh, I decided that I wanted to be like triangles that pop up on all four sides so that you can see both sides of the head and it still had that effect of a jack in the box coming out. These are just three super hard pieces of red fondant that I added CMC to so that they would hold up. Thank you guys! The scary side is complete. The fountain is done, it just needs a little bit of detail with painting. I'm going to add the same hat to the kawaii side, but I'm going to make it more fluffy. And I can't do that right now just because it won't fit in my fridge, it's too tall. Other than that, I think I'm done. Oh, this forked tongue is everything, isn't it? Okay, back to work. Now after I added all of the gold detail, I realized how much I miss it. I feel like I haven't used the luster dust in such a gluttonous way in so long. I need to do more of that. I miss you luster dust. I screwed up just a little bit with the design of this Jack in the Box because I think the hat should have been fluffier on the quiet side, but I didn't think about that. 
when I was creating the cake. So I added three big pieces of fondant and initially I added even larger pieces but I was like that's way too much fondant. <laughs> I toned it down just a little bit and I I'm, and I'm okay with the way that that turned out on the quiet side. And there you have it. My cute and scary Jack in the Box cake is complete. I'm really loving all of the gold detail. I think that's my favorite part of this cake. You can see I was supposed to fix my fondant mess here, but I got lazy so I ended up just putting <laughs> sprinkles there with some sixlets and some gumballs. And it looks like it was intentional. And it was intentional, but only because I was lazy. I'm curious, what would you name the demon that's taking over this Jack in the Box? Taking over Thomas. Now I hope you guys enjoyed this, I love you, I'll see you very soon. Peace!